I never known exactly what my target audience is doing or feeling like I do right now. Yeah. <laughs> I think there was this notion of how can I not try to speak to them now that I know exactly what they're thinking and feeling and doing. Welcome to Marketing Conversations with Lamp House Films, a show where we pick the brains of today's marketing thought leaders. Today, I'm gonna to be talking to Ryan Reese, who runs Hershey's in-house creative studio. I reached out to Ryan to discuss a brilliant campaign that he developed for icebreakers called Mint Before You Mask. But we ended up talking about everything from Ryan's marketing philosophy to the way that he thinks COVID-19 is gonna change the marketing landscape forever. But before we got into any of that, we talked a little bit about how Ryan's background as a brand guy impacts the way that he approaches campaigns. As a brand person first, I mean, like I'm a business person like at heart, right? I mean, what motivates me is like winning in the marketplace, which, you know, so like I realized that like advertising is a tool um, that one has to drive more sales. More sales are why you are literally in business. So I'm looking at the top line, the bottom line, and that's just kind of how my mind works. And so even now, as I focus on creative, I still recognize that advertising is, you know, this is not necessarily art for art's sake, um, that advertising plays a role, how you buy the advertising, what platforms you want to be on. Um, all of these things are relevant, knowing that the ultimate goal is how are we building the brands and driving more sales. Film is just such like an ego driven industry. And so we see a lot of like um, other production companies or individual creatives like just get lost in the creativity of the thing they're making mm -hmm. and forget that like when we're making commercials here, this could be the greatest film in the world, but if it doesn't sell something effectively, then it was not, it wasn't worth making. Yeah. And I think, you know, for me, I always tell people, no, I want everything. You know, I recognize that I'm interrupting what they've chosen to do, which is watch a TV show or look at, you know, look, scroll through the internet. So I want to deliver the best quality to a consumer. And, you know, for me, it's how are we delivering a message that, you know, about our products that will help convince them that they should engage with our products. Um, and, you know, a great insight can get you there. Um, really amazing film can get you there. Um, you know, I think when I first started doing creative, it wasn't creative was the issue. It, it felt like you were a business person delivering, um, brand strategy, um, through creative versus like, there was a, a lack of that kind of creative spark, that creative brilliance that made you inspired that makes someone really fall in love with the brand or makes someone really love, um, you know, and want to go buy it. And I think for me, that's been my own kind of journey is it was always strategically sound, but sometimes it was so strategically sound that it was not really making someone feel something, which is like what I want to do. Which I feel like is more important now than ever because the majority of the places where ads are trafficked, like if they don't want to watch it, they'll skip it. Yeah. And it's like your, your talking points can be sound as can be, but if they skip it, then it doesn't matter. Yeah. And there's, and there's no reason. It's just like, you know, uh, great creatives make great creatives based on briefs and they deliver the brand proposition to a consumer in a really compelling way. I think sometimes, you know, um, I tell like my creatives, no, this is, that's just an excuse, you know, well, this is like, they just want us to talk about this and uh, no, no, a great creative can make anything fun and engaging and go like our insurance isn't terribly fun. And everyone loves talking about Geico ads or Limu Emu. So I said, there's a lot of compelling film out there or even social posts that are talking about things that like on the surface are not terribly exciting. You know, so you're, you're kind of like, no, don't, don't give me that. It's you're somehow being limited. I go challenge yourself to, to do something really creatively inspiring that a consumer wants to watch, wants to talk about while still delivering the messaging that you're trying to deliver. Yeah. I think the very best creative comes out of limitations. Yeah. 
Um, so, so tell me where the inception of this mint before you mask idea came from, because I think it's so fun. The thing is like, it's kind of insane, like when you go back and, and think about it. So I give a lot of presentations and speeches and I always tell people, if you have an insight or if you have an idea, just email me, you know, no harm in it. Like it might be great. It might be bad. Um, and I said, sometimes you might have a great insight or a great, um, you can have a good creative idea, but you need someone that's really talented in their field to bring it to life. You know, I had, I had known that Mint was really struggling and was down 30 to 40% week over week, both gum and Mint. And basically, I got an email on a Friday afternoon from someone that said, hey, my fiance is a doctor at the Med Center. I don't know if you've ever heard of this, but there's this phenomenon called mass breath. Basically, you know, people in the medical field wear masks all the time and they know that, you know, your breath can be like really stale and just gets kind of gross, like smelling your own breath all day long. Um, I don't know if there's something we could do with icebreakers. And I immediately was, what was awesome was that it started with a consumer insight. Sometimes you, you kind of have to try to back into a consumer insight. Um, you know, based on, you know, what yours, like I'm selling Reese's peanut butter cups. I'm going to be selling Reese's peanut butter cups next year. What's the consumer insight to build great creative off of? There's other times when this one was just, this is a known consumer behavior. Um, and we now know that there's a bunch of the, you know, the masses are going to all of a sudden figure out what mass breath is. So I wrote him back and I said, I just think this is great. Let me try to work on it. So on Monday, I kind of briefed in the creatives and I said, I think there's something here. I mean, this is a true insight. Um, behavior is changing and I think we can talk about it in a compelling way. And so by Tuesday, um, my team had come up with, you know, this idea of mint before you mask, which, you know, was something that, you know, with taking that new occasion of, you know, people wearing a mask and saying, what can we do as a brand? And the mint before you mask idea was born, texted it to the brand team and said, hey, you know, someone reached out to me with this insight. We wanted to put some creative together. What do you think of this over text? I love it. Keep going. Took it to the next level and said, you know, here's an example what a social post could be with. Awesome. Let's put it out there. And so, you know, without a traditional briefing, without a traditional problem statement, we all, they kind of knew that obviously I'm bringing them an idea because I know what's going on with their sales. We have a new insight. We have a business need. We have a product that can address this particular insight. And so we were kind of off to the races. I feel like around these, like with these sort of COVID specific ads, part of the game is like having the right idea. And then part of it is like getting it out there right away. Yeah. And it seems yeah. like, I mean, how quickly did this whole thing come together? By, it took only one week before I think social ads were out. And, oh, wow. And that, you know, was happening during COVID is, you know, this is a, a horrible tragedy for our country. I mean, you know, not only were, you know, over 100,000 people at that point, it wasn't 100,000 people, but you could project that it was going to be over 100,000 people were losing their lives. 30 million people were filing for unemployment. You know, this was a huge tragedy. And so we, you know, take being ethical and moral very seriously. And so one issue we wanted to, to figure out was like, do we, A, do we feel okay doing this? And, you know, the way that we thought about it was, you know, the CDC and others had recommended that people wear a mask. And, you know, we thought that it was a good way, that it was kind of approach, an approachable way that we could talk about wearing a mask. We put it out on social just as a gut check to start getting some reaction. Mm -hmm. And then from that, because of the initial reaction on social was positive, we then put it together the TV ad in a week um, or less. Um, basically we got, um, footage from Getty. Um, we didn't even cast an actress. We, we just looked on Getty to see what film was available. 
because we knew timing was of the essence and the ad was born and then you know it takes a while to traffic things but it's up and it's running now too you guys are still running that i was gonna ask yeah this is like week long two week long timeline it can't be typical for your tournament oh right? no, no 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 it's like you know you everything's in months not weeks the, the thing that i wanted to, to ask you about sort of in context of this but then at large like how do you feel like covid is changing the ad space like then i think specifically about how much more nimble things are now i've found with our clients and with things that we're doing internally like we're moving way faster than we used to just because yeah things aren't relevant long anymore so how yeah. is that changing your philosophy yeah there there was something i've never been at a point you know every brand has always said they want to be culturally relevant right and you know and it kind of you kind of laugh and say, well, uh, yeah, of course you don't want to be culturally irrelevant. I mean, like, no, no, whatever, choose that. But the reality is, you know, when it comes to like the food categories, it's not as if showing beautiful food shots necessarily needed to be talking about what was going on in society. Um, there was times when you don't want, you don't run a holiday ad during the summer or you don't run an Easter ad during Halloween. But no one was really expecting everyone to really take what was going on in society um, in, into their advertising. And what I think happened with COVID was for the first time, it was like, like this is literally a big global pandemic that we've never experienced. Like none of us in our lives have gone through this. It feels really insensitive or really tone deaf to not be addressing the fact that we're literally all at our houses right now. Mm -hmm. I think it made, you know, the advertising, you know, industry kind of take a pause. I've never known exactly what my target audience is doing or feeling like I do right now. Yeah. <laughs> I think there was this notion of how can I not try to speak to them now that I know exactly what they're thinking and feeling and doing. But I think there was this, this notion of, I really need to be thinking about what am I providing to my consumer? What am I, how am I reaching them with their own, where they are right now? And so I do believe that the future of advertising is gonna change, that we need to be more nimble. We need to be more cognizant of a consumer mindset in ways that we weren't before. That the notion of just like, hey, I'm gonna spend a year on this ad campaign and you know the world's not going to change that much so there's no worry i think is saying you know what like i don't know i, I think i'd rather have a an ad that feels like it was made right now than a million dollar production that feels like it was made a year ago thanks for watching another episode of marketing conversations with lamp house films lamp house is a film production company that focuses on film-centered marketing campaigns if you want to chat with us about your next campaign, feel free to reach out to me. I'm Josh at lamphousefilms.com. If you feel like you learned something from this conversation, there's actually a little bit more of it. After this, Ryan and I talked for another five minutes or so about some really practical tips of how he's planning to keep up with these new expectations for relevant content. If you're interested in that, you can check out the link in our description um, where you can sign up for our email list. We post bonus content on there all the time. Make sure you come back next week when I talk to Joel from Discover Lancaster. See you then.